So in this little video, we're going to just show a little example of how do you hide and show uh, sections um, on, a, on, a, on a view. Um, like when you ask a question, um, are you of a certain type, and you say yes, and then a few other uh, items appear. So what I'm first going to do is just create a small object that's going to host our data. And of course, these can be auto generated from backend systems or SharePoint lists or, or, or things like that. I'm just going to call this a hide and uh, show example. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do an example of um, do maybe a question. Do you have X? I'm going to make that a little yes, no. And then if they do, um, I don't know, maybe it's like a first name, a last name, we need to get a, a, an email. You know, so maybe, uh, you know, do, you have, do you have a partner? And if they do have a partner, then you, you need to fill in these, these extra details. So it's something along those sort of lines. Okay, so I've got those basics uh, inside there. I'm just going to finish that off. That's our little repository of data, and again, uh, it could have been uh, ge automatically generated from a, a SQL database or a SharePoint list or a Dynamics CRM or whatever it might be. What I'm next going to do is just uh, build uh, the view that's going to contain uh, that data and we're going to interact with it. Call it the hide and show view. And let's just automatically generate the whole page. So you've so got this whole page sitting in here. Let's tidy this up a little bit. I have this little checkbox uh, over here. Uh, there's a little label here that we could put there. And now what we want to do is that when you say do you have a partner and you check that, I then want this to appear. So I don't want to have first name, last name, and an email until this has been checked. And if you uncheck it, I want to hide them and then show them. So uh, that sort of scenario. So what I'm going to do here is just add another little column. I'm going to uh, decide how I want to lay this out. So first name, last name, email. I think I might even just keep them in the little bottom section over here. I'm going to put all of these into a little table because I want them grouped. I don't want to have a rule that hides this label and hides this one and then hides this and hides this and shows it. You know, there's too much going on there. I want an entire section to be um, to hide and show uh, based upon the option that's been selected here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and uh, group these together inside of a table. So there we go. There we go. Here's my table. Let's drop that in here. Uh, we're going to have a table of uh, two columns and two rows for now. So just like that. And let's just put first name, last name inside there, and email, something like that. Maybe you can even merge that one across. Okay. Now I go to my table, I give it a little bit of a name. Uh, I call this table partner, something like that. And first, I'm going to set its visibility to invisible. All right. Then I go to the checkbox itself. All right. Let's add a rule behind the checkbox. So when this control has changed, then my action is going to be to set the set of controls properties. The control that we're going to manipulate is going to be our table partner, where we've got all those controls combined inside it. And we're going to say, well, it's visibility. Are we going to make it yes or no? Now, I don't have to go and put rules that if it's checked, then yes. If it's not, it's going to make it nice and easy. I'm just going to go to the actual control. Do you have a partner checkbox? And plop that into the visibility. So if, if do you have a partner is true, then it's going to be visible. If it's false, then it's not going to be visible. So nice and simple. So we'll just do that. And let's finish that off. And I'm just going to put this onto a form quickly. If you remember views, I can use it on many different forms. So we'll do that. So if we go and look at a little form now and we go and run it. Okay, do you have a partner? If I say yes, you can see details are there, details are not there. So nice and simple. What's also quite nice about this is if I go now to uh, that view, and we talk about validation. So when I hit the save, oh, let's actually move some of these columns to make it a little bit tighter. What I might even do is take this one here, merge it right across. All right. When you hit the save button, I need first name, last name, and email to be populated. But obviously, I don't want to check that validation unless that has been checked. 
So instead of also having rules saying if that's checked, then check all these and having complex rules, Katie's made it nice and simple that when I go into the save button, I can go and add some validation. So if the form passes validation, then do the save. Well, for the validation, we need to have first name, last name, and email validated, but only show it. Uh, do not validate hidden fields. So by this option being in which is the default, it won't check those unless they are actually visible fields for us to deal with. So if I go and save that now, let's refresh our form. So I do have a partner. If I hit yes and then try and hit the save, you can see there that's validating those. But if I take that away and I hit save, it's actually saved the form. And obviously we can put more rules behind that. You can also hide and show entire sections. So to give you an example of that, we're going to go and, uh, and uh, extend the form a little bit. I'm just going to use the same view that we built, but put it on the form twice. It's a nice little reuse of that, uh, of that form. So we're going to do that. I'm going to grab this hide and show little example again. So we're going to go and have um, uh, view one and view two over here. So, so in this example, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to extend the rule that we have on this one, that when you have a partner, I want this to show, but this section here to also pop up. All right. So maybe we can call this uh, your details and partner details. It's just another example of, of hiding details in a view and then also hiding and showing entire views based upon on that selection criteria as well. So let's go and do that. So if I go to my rules, you can see we've already got the rule that's checking uh, if you have a partner to hide and show that section. What we're going to do is go to this view first of all and make that visible as well. Go back to this top section. Go to the rule there. It's going to extend that rule. Remember here we're setting the properties of table, just like we, you know, that was the, the rule on the view. Now we're at the form level, we can go and extend upon that. So I'm also going to go and uh, set the properties, set of views properties. The view is going to be our view B. We're going to go to its properties over here. There's its visibility as well. And I'm just going to do it exactly the same way I did the other one. Let's keep it simple. Let's go and take that, drop that into the visibility, or even maybe into the enabled or not, or if it's collapsed or not. And, you know, that's the stuff we can do as well. Let's go and do that. Save that. And let's go and look at our little form. So my form opens up when I say, you do, do you have a partner? I've opened up that section and I've also opened up that section, which has got its own rule to open up the next section. So you can see how that's all sort of tying together. So hiding and showing details on its own view, as well as tying that rule into hiding entire view. So this could be an entire view with its own section and rules and stuff. And I guess this example also gives you uh, this, how you can build a form and reuse the views that you've, that you've, uh, that you've built. So a little bit of the reusability inside there as well.